Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale 23,500 gallon tank car from Atlas. My car is decorated for ACFX and stenciled for asphalt service. The MSRP for this car is $47.95. I paid $31.99 for my car at modeltrainstuff.com. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The car comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window on top. Inside, a two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. A thin layer of soft, clear plastic film offers some additional protection against scratches. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. My model represents a tank car assigned to asphalt service. I was unable to find any photos of the real ACFX 73099. Atlas offers two other numbers for ACFX asphalt service cars, 73109 and 73117. I did manage to find a photo of 73109. While the Atlas model looks similar, close examination reveals that the model is not the same car. The most obvious difference is that the triple valve and air reservoir are on the same end as the brake wheel on the real car. On the model, the brake wheel is on the opposite end. There are numerous other small detail differences as well. The paint job is also not quite right. On ACFX 73109, the top of the tank on the ends is painted red. The model looks plausible and is certainly built along the same lines as the real car, so if you don't mind having somewhat unprototypical cars, then it might be okay. This model is a good stand-in for the real thing. Still, the car is what some modelers would call a FUBI, meaning that the car body style and paint combination is inaccurate. With so many prototype correct models in this price range, I think this is a miss. I'm taking 5 points for details and 5 points for the incorrect paint job. It's worth noting that this car body style may be correct for other paint schemes. The paint on this model is opaque and thin enough not to obscure detail. The markings are crisp and all but the tiniest writing is legible with magnification. I like that the safety bars along the lower sides of the car seem to be made of metal. Plastic ones often get bent out of shape. The stirrups are molded on and look a little thick in cross section. The ladders leading up to the hatch in the middle of the car are made of a flexible plastic. This should help protect against breakage. The hazmat placards are separately applied parts. Both ends of the car have freestanding end railings, hazmat placards, and end grabs. The A end has a brake reservoir and triple valve. The B end has a brake wheel. Neither end has uncoupling levers or brake lines. The end platforms are solid plastic and not see-through. There are other cars in this price range that have those details, so I'm taking five points. Up top, the car has nice hatch detail. The walkways are plastic and not see-through, though this isn't too noticeable since they're mounted close to the tank body and the entire car is painted black. The railings on the top are made of a flexible plastic that looks like it will withstand modest bumps without braking. Underneath, the car has freestanding brake detail. The rods appear a bit oversized, but the overall effect is still good. There's enough there for the car to look good when sitting on the track. The trucks have metal wheels with plastic axles. The car has plastic Accumate couplers on both ends. The coupler on the A end is at the correct height, though the trip pin is slightly low and hits the trip pin clearance tab on the height gauge. The coupler on the B end is also correct. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no significant body wobble. The car weighs 5.1 ounces. The NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length is 4.75 ounces. A little extra weight should help the car to track better. The car is very free rolling. Since this is a tank car and since I don't like plastic couplers, I'm going to change the couplers on my car to KD119 SE type shelf couplers. The draft gear boxes have screws on the bottom. There are no uncoupling levers to worry about, so it's pretty straightforward. I'll start by removing the screw that holds the draft gear box cover in place. The old coupler comes apart in two halves. The KD couplers drop right in. Now I just need to replace the screw. Unfortunately, the new coupler on the A end is now low. The one on the B end is also low. Both couplers are drooping, so I'm going to try shimming the inside of the draft gear box. I'll cut a small strip of 10,000th styrene to fit inside the draft gear box. The Atlas draft gear box lid is stepped so that part of it fits inside the draft gear box. I'll use some liquid styrene cement to secure the shim. The strip needs to be the same width as the inner part of the lid. Now I'll reassemble the couplers. The B end worked fine, but the A end is a little sticky. The coupler can't snap back to center like it's supposed to. After taking the coupler box apart again, I'll use a flat file to remove just a little bit of material from the shim. Now it works like it's supposed to. I'll take the lids off one more time and use a black sharpie to darken the shim so they're not so obvious. With everything back together, now the A end looks good. 
So does the BN. I'm pretty sure I got rid of the centering problem, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put some KD Greasem into the draft gear boxes. This is a dry powdered graphite lubricant. After adding some of the graphite, I'll wiggle the couplers back and forth a few times to spread it around. Blowing on the couplers will scatter any excess powder. When I'm done with all the mechanical fixes on a piece of rolling stock, I put a dot of green paint somewhere on the bottom. That way later on I'll know that I've already worked on this car. This car is now ready to be weathered and put in service. Let's see what we've got. The body style and paint job are incorrect for this prototype car, so I took 10 points in the prototype accuracy category. The model lacks details that some other comparable models in this price range have, so I took 5 points in the paint and detail category. That leaves us with 85 out of 100 possible points, which would be a B on a report card. This is a decent model and it deserves a green signal. Like some other Atlas models, this car has older tooling that's been around for a while. If you're not looking for 100% prototype accuracy, but just want a nice looking modern tank car for your layout, then I think you might like it.